Hi everyone, welcome to this massive art haul video. I think this is quite possibly the largest art haul I've ever done. I'm going to try and be as quick as possible going through the different items because I would quite like to be able to swatch in this video too. But if it seems like it's going to be a long one, I will split it up into the actual art haul and then the swatching in a separate video. So we'll just have to see how we go. But um, yeah, I've been saving up this stuff. This is several different orders and I've been saving it up for about two months now. So um, it's from seven different shops. Let's see if I can remember them off the top of my head. Jackson's Art, there were several smaller orders from them over the two months that I'm including in this. Um, Paper Story, I've had a couple of orders from them. Uh, Colt Pens, AP Fitzpatrick, who I had never ordered from before, um, but they were really lovely. Their customer service was great. Amazon, Chelsea Paper Company and Choosing Keeping. I think that's all seven. Um, I'm going to insert the footage of the Choosing Keeping unboxing here because I did that separately. I wanted to actually film the unboxing of that. Whereas all of these I've actually opened up the packages and they're all mixed in together. But I'm going to show you that now, the Choosing Keeping, and I'll be back to show you what I've got in here. So we have one item separately here. Very excited to open that one. And um, three in this lovely little envelope with the gorgeous bird stickers. I've just unwrapped the bubble wrapped package and this is what was inside. Look how special this is. A little bottle of ink and it actually has a wax seal on top and a little cork stopper with the string. Now this is a metallic gold ink. So look how beautiful that is. I can't wait to try that out. They've enclosed a beautiful postcard which shows the interior of their shop, which I one day hope to actually visit in person and a little thank you for placing an order and then here we have a card which i thought would be a good card for dominic these are the other two items so let's just put that one to the side for a moment this is aquarella paper i've had their aquarella paper before. I had the smaller version of this pad and I loved the quality of the paper. It's actually watercolour paper. Um, it's somewhere between hot pressed and cold pressed so let's see if I can just show you quickly. It has a very slight texture but not very much at all. It's not as smooth as hot pressed paper. And I found that it's actually really good for uh, pencil drawing as well. So I'm using it for that as well as watercolour. And then the other pad of paper I got is really something quite unusual. I'm going to see if I can take the outer um, band off so then I can show you what the actual paper is like. But um, I love this branding. Everything is so well packaged and so beautiful. So I'll try and take that off and show you the paper. OK, 
okay I've zoomed out very slightly so you can see a little bit more of what I'm going to show you um, although I will do some nice close-ups too <laughs> okay so the first thing we have here is the Winsor & Newton tear-off palettes now I don't know whether any of you use these but I love these I started using them I don't know a couple of years ago I think and um, they're basically that seems to be kind of sealed at the top so I'll just try to show you um, they're very shiny kind of wax coated paper I think it's quite thin paper but they're brilliant for acrylics I always use them for my acrylic painting um, I don't know whether you can use them for anything else it does say just for use with oil and acrylic um, you get 50 in a book so they last me quite a long time they're seven pounds fifty from paper story so I kind of alternate between these and my normal palette but I really like those I like the Winsor & Newton ones I bought two of these Etcher sketchbooks they're watercolor paper cold press which means they're very lightly textured which is my favorite kind of paper to work on um, I got an A5 and an A6 someone recommended these to me one of my viewers I'm sorry I can't remember who it was um, but if it was you I did actually go and buy them um, I haven't tried them yet obviously as you can see this one's all packaged up in the plastic but um, I'll unpack those properly later you can see that it's in a really nice little packet and we'll have a closer look at that but um, yeah they look really nice they both came from Jackson's by the way Okay, this um, was what I bought from AP Fitzpatrick. I'm going to put that to the side because we'll have a look at that separately in a moment. Um, in here, we have a real mixture of things from Jackson's, Amazon, Paper Story, <laughs> I think. I think that's it. But um, I think we'll start by opening this up and having a look at what I've got. This is a very watercolour heavy art haul. So... Um, let's just go through these quickly obviously I will be swatching these in the following video um, I've bought some more Daniel Smith watercolors I love how things from paper story come with the little old-fashioned sticky um, price ticket on <laughs> so yeah that was £13.50 um, Daniel Smith watercolors are always quite expensive I don't know whether it's the same in the States but here in the UK they are um, but this is one of the larger ones. This is a 15 mil um, size. I got Jane's Grey, which I'm excited to try because that looks like a beautiful colour. Um, and here we have Schmincke. I don't have many Schmincke paints actually. So I wanted to try their super granulating um, watercolours. It's a special edition. This is Forest Blue and it looks like an absolutely gorgeous colour. I love um, bluish greens, so very excited to try that as well. So some of the other Daniel Smiths were So Delight Genuine. This was a really expensive one, so I only have the small 5mm of that. Um, this is one I've wanted for ages, Moon Glow, so I'm excited to try that finally after all this time. I bought one of their Payne's Greys because I'm a huge fan of Payne's Grey. I use it all the time, so I thought it'd be nice to have one of theirs. I have Transparent Pyrol. Is that how you say that? Pyr Pyrol. Transparent Pyrol. Transparent Pyrol. Pyrol. Orange. Whatever it is, I have it because it looked like a really great orange. And also another favourite colour, I have Thalo Turquoise. So there's a few more Daniel Smiths. I think I may have some more in here. Um, I'm pretty certain I do. But everything has been mixed in. As the orders have been arriving, I've been unpacking and checking them off just to make sure everything was there and everything was fine. Um, and then I've just put them in two boxes. So <laughs> everything is mixed up. Um, but I think I got most of those. They either came from Jackson's or Paper Story. I have several Winsor & Newton professional watercolours here as well. Um, Potter's Pink, Caput Mortem Violet. Um, these are two gorgeous colours that I think will go quite well together as well. Um, a lot of these colours, by the way, are new to me. Um, I'm really trying to expand my watercolour palette, as I've spoken about in other videos recently you'll be seeing several videos about making watercolor palettes coming up so this is what 
these will be used for and this is where you will really see what I'm going to do with all of this. Next we have there's some more Winsor & Newtons down here. These ones actually came from Paper Story because they had a sale on, so I added some more colours. Um, we have an indigo, a titanium white, I don't know how to say this, rose doré. Um, it looked like a very pretty colour. And um, Windsor Green blue shade. Some other tubes we have down here. I decided to get um, Shell Pink, the Holbein Artist watercolour. I haven't used the um, Holbein watercolour yet. I've used their gouache paint, which I really like. So I thought I would get this colour because it's just the most beautiful pink. Let me just... I'm always a bit worried about opening paint tubes because sometimes they're over full and they come out. But see how soft and gorgeous that colour is. So I have a big tube of that and a smaller tube of raw sienna. I think those ones will go quite nicely together as well. I also decided to buy some of Jackson's own brand watercolour, which I haven't used before. But I keep hearing good things about Jackson's own brand materials. Sorry, if I keep going off the camera, it's because I'm looking down and I'm not looking at the screen, which I should be really. Um, I got lots of um, earthy colours of theirs. So I have Venetian red, warm sepia, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, raw umber and Naples yellow. I like Naples yellow because it's a bit of a, a softer yellow. I don't tend to use yellow much in my work and I kind of feel like Naples yellow is more my kind of yellow. So yeah, I have six of their tubes of watercolour. So it'll be interesting to swatch those and see what they're like, but I have heard good things as I say. So in this little box, um, there are actually, yeah, Schmincke paints. So we have, yeah, two little ones. We have an Indian red and a Payne's Grey bluish. I thought a slightly more bluish Payne's Grey would be really nice in my watercolour collection. So that's why I got those. I'm loving all of this packaging, by the way. I really love it when the tubes are this... Um, metallic silvery colour. I think it looks really traditional and nice. Um, okay, so the other little watercolours we have here, if I can actually get them out. Now these are new to me as well. Um, these are Roman Schmoll. Um, I don't know whether I'm pronouncing that correctly. I hope I am. I just bought three of those because I wasn't sure. I mean, I've heard good things about them but um, I thought I will just start off with three. So I think this one is Green Earth, yep. Perylene Green and English Red Deep. It's a nice trio of colors there. So they will be good in my little watercolor palettes. Um, these are full pans, by the way. And these tiny ones here are half pans. <laughs> They're so small, they're like little, little sweets. Um, I have, this is a Jackson's brand again, so Artist Watercolour, Payne's Grey and Chinese White. Um, so they'll be nice to go in the palettes too. Let's get rid of this. So I decided to get from Jackson's after seeing somebody swatching this on YouTube, um, this Daniel Smith Blues Serene to Dramatic hand poured watercolour half pan palette. So it comes with six colours and it has, um, I think there's 15 in total, yeah. So you can fill with um, the paints of your choice the empty pans, which I thought was a really good idea. And I've decided already that I'm going to be using this palette purely for Daniel Smith greys and blues. So I think that will be a really nice palette to um, have either on my desk or to take out with me. Um, i just open this up because I'd quite like you to have a look at this so you see what you get inside. There's this little leaflet telling you, telling you all about them, the different sets that you can get. I really like the look of the Earth, Desert to Mountains one. The other ones I'm not so fussed about. I think they look nice, but maybe not so much for my subject matter and style of painting. 
Um, they have an ultimate mixing set which looks good but I have a lot of their mixing colours. Um, colours of inspiration and a sketcher, sketcher set as well, that's difficult to say. <laughs> and they do a floral as well. So yeah, that's quite a nice little leaflet to look at so I think I'll keep that out and have a good look at that later. But here's the little palette itself, it comes with um, a little card on it saying I'm unique. All colours inside are made with the highest pigment load possible, hand poured and dried to specific water retention levels. You may notice that some colours may have pulled away slightly from the side or corner or may have a roundness to them. This is normal for our hand poured product. And then it goes on to say that they have undergone multiple rigorous quality control tests. So I'm going to try and get this off. Okay, so I just went and took the sticky little bit of glue off there. Um, but you can see this beautiful rose gold embossed logo. And inside you have... Oh, I actually pulled out a little piece of um, protective. There was a little piece of protective material covering these. Um, but yeah, you get the little... You get six half pans and, um, and then your empty pans, which you can take out they all have the little Daniel Smith logo on the bottom as well so yeah as I say I'm going to use this I think for um, all of my Daniel Smith blues and greys so that'll be a nice little limited palette of those um, so the colours you get in here I did show you the packaging quickly but I don't think I mentioned it so you get indigo this is one of my favorite colours and I'm actually running quite low on this because I only have a five mil tube at the moment so I use it a lot so it's nice to have another indigo in here have cerulean blue Payne's blue grey so that's interesting so I get to try their blue grey as well as their normal Payne's grey in the tube um, so Delight Genuine, which I was really pleased about because, as I said, the other one was really expensive and um, that's why I only had a small tube, so that can go in one of my other palettes and I have this one here. We have Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine, which looks like a really pretty colour, and Luna Blue, which I'm very excited to try. So that's a really nice little limited palette. Um, so yeah, I'll be swatching all of these. I think it will be in a follow-up video because this is going to take us ages to go through all this stuff. So I'll show you some of the things I got from Amazon. Um, this little Winsor & Newton watercolour pad. This is a postcard sized pad of um, lightly textured watercolour paper. I love these. I use them all the time. Not necessarily the Winsor & Newton brand. That was just the one I found on um, Amazon. But um, yeah, they're a great size just for small paintings and they're a great little thing to take with you when you travel. I'm also going to be doing a travel video where I talk to you about um, the things I would pack my travel art supplies, say if I was going away for a couple of days or if I was going away for a week. And I'll show you all of the different things that I would um, decide to have in my travel kit. So this will be one of them. And I love these. I managed to find these, if I can open it, <laughs> these cute little empty watercolour palettes. See it opens up like that, you actually have, let me just close that in case it falls out, you have this little ring on the back so you can hold it like a proper palette. So you put your little either full pans or half pans in there and you can use these as mixing surfaces. So these are fantastic little palettes, I think they cost I think it was roughly eight pounds something, just under nine pounds each, which is fairly expensive, but they seem pretty well made. I really love the color as well. So because I'm gonna be making lots of different palettes, um, I ordered three of them. Bizarrely, two came with this branding on and one without. And I don't know whether you can tell um, on the camera because maybe the light isn't so great but um, this one is a slightly different colour as well which doesn't really bother me I mean it's fine <laughs> but um, it's a bit weird how two of them had the branding and one didn't but they're pretty much identical it's just they have the branding inside and out but yeah so I've got three of those and um, I look forward to making up different palettes for different subjects so to go in the palettes I have bought, um, I think this is a pack of a hundred 
half pans because I'm going to be squeezing out the paint tubes into pans. So I got lots of these so that I never run out. I think I'm going to be doing mainly half pans um, and I have a few, I think there's a dozen in there, um, full pans. So these will be for colours I use a lot of, the ones I use most often. And I quite like to show you actually this big palette next. So this one came from Jackson's beautiful black palette, exactly the same as the smaller ones really. So it opens up like that, but as you can see, you can put a lot more paint in there. So this is gonna be my main watercolor palette. This will be um, this will be the one where I have a real mixture of everything, so it won't be such a themed palette. Um, yeah, so I thought I need a bigger one for that. So it'd be great for traveling as well. If I just wanted to take one palette with me, I would probably take this one, which will contain pretty much everything I would need. Um, and it's still a good kind of travel size. So this was a bit of an impulse purchase. These are magic watercolor sponges. It says completely remove unwanted watercolor paint from your paper with the miracle paint grabbing job ability of the magic sponge eraser. Simply dampen and gently rub the desired area until the paint is removed. Um, it seems that you can, yeah, you can reuse them. You just rinse them clean, chemical free. You get four in a pack. Um, they weren't too expensive. I think they were probably around four pounds, something like that. They weren't very expensive. I saw them, um, I believe it was on Jackson's and just thought that looks intriguing because sometimes I like to um, dab at the watercolour and I use kitchen towel <laughs> and I thought it might be quite interesting to use these instead. Right, we're down to the last few things in this box and then I have another one after this. So in here we have three um, large Daniel Smith paints, Rare Green Earth, Mayan Dark Blue and Sugalite, Sugalite, <laughs> Sugalite, genuine. Um, I've seen these swatched, they all look amazing. I'm very excited to try the Mayan Dark Blue. I'm a big fan of Dark Blues, so um, this is a pretty stunning paint. And uh, yeah, be interesting to find out what they're really like. I was pretty certain that I was gonna love all of these. This is why I have the large tubes of them. So last but not least in here, I wanted to expand my regular gouache collection because I have also acrylic gouache, but I want to get back into using regular gouache a little bit more. And I had some um, gaps in my collection, shall we say. So I went through everything I had and these were the ones I decided to add. I have nine different paints here. So we have Naples Yellow again, um, Naples Yellow Deep and Burnt Sienna. Beautiful shades, which I know I'm gonna use a lot and love. And in here, see if we can get these out. I have Ultramarine, Perylene Maroon and Quinacridone Magenta. I also really wanted to get a Burnt Sienna and an Ultramarine because when you mix them together, you can make um, Payne's Grey and they don't actually do a Payne's Grey, which I was surprised about, but um, I thought I can make my own. So I thought that's quite handy. <laughs> um, right, so here we have Zinc White, Windsor Green and Viridian. So these were the nine I decided to get to go with um, the gouache paints I already own to kind of complete my collection and give me like a broader color choice. Okay, so we're onto the second box now. I just have zoomed out a little bit as well, just to show you this Jackson's watercolor catalog. I think this cost a pound. I saw that they had it and um, it looks like a really good reference of everything watercolour related that they stock from the paints to the paper to the brushes and accessories palettes and so on um, yeah I'm going to keep that in the studio and I think this is going to be something I refer to a lot so that's why I got that starting with um, a brush I wanted um, a flat watercolour brush I thought this was the perfect size um, this is a pro art proline 
there let's get into it let's get into it and have a look then i can oh sorry i'm not the thing <laughs> then i can tell you exactly what it is I love these brushes. They're one of my favourite brushes for um, watercolour, gouache, and um, I occasionally use them for acrylic too, actually. I don't know whether you're supposed to, but I do. Um, this is the three-eighths of an inch one. Yeah, it's a Pro Art Proline. So I got that. That came from Jackson's. Um, this is a real mixture as well from different... If anything isn't from... Jackson's or Paper Story. <laughs> Assume it's from Jackson's or Paper Story. If it isn't, I'm going to try and remember to tell you where it's from. Um, okay, so let's get these large ones out of here first. This is um, a restock for me. I love burnt sienna opaque Galleria acrylic, so I decided to um, get a big tub this time before I had a tube, and I'm using it a lot in my works at the moment. I'm doing a series called Nestled Amongst the Trees and I tend to use this colour. I like to mix it with titanium white and makes gorgeous sort of peachy, pinky shades. So that's why I've got a large one of those. And this is another new product for me. This, is that focusing? Um, this is Jackson's own brand acrylic colour so I decided I needed some more Payne's Grey and I decided to just go for one of theirs and see what it's like it was I can't remember the cost of it but it was really reasonably priced so I will report back when I've tried these out and let you know how I'm getting on with them I have two other tubes of acrylic in here now there's a story behind this one <laughs> this was from paper story I was ordering some other bits and pieces from them and they had a sale on the Galleria acrylic I actually ordered pale terracotta and they sent me red ochre I got in touch with them I showed them um, a photo of this and my order form that they'd enclosed and he got back to me really quickly they were so polite and so nice and he's already sent another one out the correct paint he apologized profusely and said I could keep this one for the inconvenience so that's good and it's a colour I'm going to use a lot so I'll definitely be putting that to good use but I was really impressed with their customer service they seem so friendly and really nice um, and this is also Jackson's acrylic colour this is I think the slightly more expensive one so this is like this is the studio version um, they're, they're all light fast and great quality so I'm not really worried I think I just went with this because I really like the colour um, so it's Indian red and um, in a really nice tube I really like their packaging okay so I think let's just put those out of the way um, next I'm going to show you the pencils I bought um, I decided after hearing many many good things to buy six um, different colours of the Holbein Artist Coloured Pencil. I wanted to get a soft white because one of my viewers had recommended that to me as a brilliant opaque white pencil the other month. Jackson's have been out of stock ever since he told me about it, so I haven't been able to get it. But I did get um, Smoke Blue, Grape, Yellow Ochre, Fur Green, Indigo, of course, and Coral. So I'm really getting into using coral colours at the moment. They go really well with greys. So um, yeah, those are my six Holbein Artist Coloured Pencils. I'm going to swatch those and we'll have a little look at what they look like on the paper. So I have loads of other pencils in here. Um, oh yes, the Derwent Light Fast. Okay, I need to separate those out because they're new to me. All of these pencils that I buy is, be is because I hear good things about them from um, other YouTubers or people on Instagram. Right, we all know I love luminance, so these aren't new to me, <laughs> but I'll show you what I bought. Um, I stocked up on, what have I got here? Payne's Grey, oh yeah, I'm really into Payne's Grey 60% at the moment, because Payne's Grey is one of my favourites, but... Payne's Grey 60%, I'm getting through them quite quickly, so I bought three of those and a Payne's Grey 30%, which I really love because it's so, it's 
so beautiful that color is really nice um <laughs> this there's a story behind these this is why i have so many so here i have five i actually have six but i'm using one at the moment um now this is oh goodness me <laughs> now i have to pronounce this um luminants are never known for their ease of pronunciation um anthra quinoid pink um I discovered this pencil really recently, absolutely loved it. Let me just show you the tip of it so you can have a look. There we go. See that beautiful corally pink color, really bright, really gorgeous. Um, light falseness of one, so the highest light falseness, um, which you don't always get with pinks and reds actually. Um, discovered this, absolutely loved it, was like, I have a new favorite color. And then I saw a video on YouTube just the other day saying that they have discontinued um, the pigment. Um, now what was the pigment called? Was it PR 168 or 178? I can't remember now. Anyway, the pigment that is in these pencils and in many, many paints, they've discontinued it. So obviously there are limited stocks of this pigment now. So I don't know whether Caran d'Ache will be discontinuing these pencils. This is why I bought several of them. I know they're gonna run out one day, but um, I just thought I would stock up because I love them and I couldn't believe it. I literally discovered a couple of days before that I loved this pencil and then I discovered that they were discontinuing the pigment that they used to make it. So that's the story behind those. Um, and the other pencils, these are kind of restocks for me, dark indigo um, luminance, I use that all the time. And also the um, Faber-Castell Polychromos Caput Mortem Violet. Um, I love this in pencil form. Um, this is why I bought the paint as well. Um, I think it was the Winsor & Newton one, wasn't it? The same shade and was kind of like, I need a paint in that color. I'm sorry if this is getting a little bit dark. Um, the light is fading a bit because we're getting towards the end of the afternoon and I really wanted to film this today and I wanted to do it by natural light because I think that's the best way of doing it. But um, we're kind of nearly there, I think, <laughs> if I go through these last ones quite quickly. Okay, so I have, I think it's 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, yeah, 13. Derwent Light Fast. I will show them to you like this. Um, I won't go through all of the names. What I will do is swatch them in the follow-up video and you can see them then. Um, but some really lovely colours there. Um, I heard good things about the Derwent Light Fast pencils and decided, because I love the Derwent drawing pencils, that I will um, I will buy just a few open stock colours um, so I could choose the shades I wanted and we will be swatching those so we'll see what those look like. I have just one little chunky canvas here, this is a 5 by 5 inch cotton Windsor & Newton canvas. Um, I just basically wanted to try this and see what it was like because I'm not 100% sure I've tried this exact one before so um, yeah I bought this just to to give it a go, that's why I just have one of those. Here's the other little etcher um, sketchbook. I think what we're going to have to do is also look at these in detail in the follow-up video. Or well, this one, it's just going to be insanely long. I have a couple of pens in here as well. Um, I have a Faber-Castell Pit Artist Brush Pen in Kaput Mortem. You might guess that I love that colour <laughs> and um, I have a Posca in light orange. I own a chunkier version of this and um, I wanted a slightly smaller one so that's why I've got that. Let's put those brushes to the side for a second, talk about those in a minute. But I want to just share with you these tiny pads. <laughs> these are so cute, look at the size of these. They are absolutely adorable. Now these were little samples from Jackson's. I believe they were like one pound 
20 something like that each um, we have the Stonehenge aqua cold press black I actually have a large pad of this I know I love it I bought this because I thought it'd be great to do tiny drawings and paintings on so I already know I love that paper so I didn't really get it as a sample I got it to just use the paper um, we have Stonehenge colors so there are different different shades in this book see that one's a sort of fawn and a cream um, it says five neutral colors to choose from natural fawn cream pearl gray and warm white so that will be interesting to test those out I've also got um, a Linux cotton um, so it's the first 100% cotton paper to be produced by an American mill with a soft textured finish. Oh, it really is quite smooth. I don't know if you can see that on there, but... So that's that one. We have a Stonehenge White. So this is also... It's sort of a warm white. So that's a really smooth paper. I think a lot of these are going to be good for drawings, so I might do some really tiny miniature drawings on these. And this one is a Stonehenge Warm White. Nice, thick, very thick, almost like card. So yeah, I thought they were quite good. Um, I'd never really looked in the Jackson's sample section before, but um, yeah, so for, for probably just over five pounds, I've got five little pads there that I can, I think, create some really nice work on, as well as being able to test out new papers which is good oh I left this in here because I actually bought a sea white um, travel journal um, this is the watercolour sketchbook I was using for the swatches I was doing the other day so I'm sorry I needed to use it and um, yeah so I did use that one <laughs> before I mean I'd had it for like you know about a month and a half or something and actually the time came to use it and I thought oh well I can just tell you about it you've seen it in action already if you've watched the video okay so here this was a bit of an oh sorry I've knocked the camera in this was a bit of an impulse purchase as well and uh, <laughs> this is a Faber-Castell perfection tiny tiny oh whoops I'm off the screen very professional Natasha tiny tiny eraser and a little brush to brush away the bits that you've erased I also thought it might be good to just sort of like brush away um, when I'm using coloured pencil and the little dusty bits come off instead of constantly making disgusting blowing noises on the paper when I'm filming I thought I'd just get my little brush and brush it off but we'll see how well that works and this one is, um, sorry about the rustling, I guess we have a bit of ASMR. Let's... Ah, it's getting stuck to me. So this is a miniature painting brush by Pro Art, and um, it's a 3-0, so really, really tiny. I use their... Uh, proline brush in a 3-0 but this one has a really chunky like um, triangular handle so I thought this might be really comfortable when I'm doing small details be interesting to try that out and the last yep the last thing in here now these were from the Chelsea paper company and they are Betty Hayways um vegan i believe <laughs> um watercolor paint brushes and look at the incredible in fact i'm going to get rid of this box so you can appreciate it properly there we go you can appreciate how beautiful these brushes are they're like a work of art in themselves so i decided to get uh, the pack of um three larger ones so i have a size I should put those in size order really shouldn't I a size 11 a size 9 and a 7 and uh, they were recommended by he's called fine liner nerd on um, YouTube and he uses these brushes all the time he's a watercolor artist and I thought I'd give them a go because I really like the way they hold a lot of um, water 
but they also have a really fine point. There's one <laughs> I'm going to show you, see whether you can see um, this little one on the end here. I noticed, I don't know how well this is showing up on camera, do you notice that the end is very slightly bent? It goes off very, very slightly. It's just been put, the end has been put on a little bit wonky. So I kind of thought, do I get in touch with them about that? It's actually not showing up on camera as much as it does in real life. Um, but then I thought it seems pretty secure and I don't think it's gonna affect when I use it. So I didn't, but yeah, they were, they weren't cheap brushes, they were £30 for the three, um, but that did include postage within the UK as well, I think, so um, yeah, and they're quite large brushes, so it's not super expensive, but they're not cheap either, but they're really beautiful. And I just have a couple more things to show you very quickly before we lose the light. In the Jackson's um, sample section, I also got several different papers so i have um this new botanical ultra smooth paper they just gave me a tiny sample of that and you do have to pay for these i think they're about a pound a sheet but they're incredibly thick so we have canson heritage um i think i got a rough surface and not surface which is um in between so it's like a cold pressed um lightly textured surface and you can see that one is much rougher and then I have hot pressed smooth paper now I'm actually going to not just test on these but I am going to cut off the top and I'm going to use these sheets of paper for proper paintings paintings that will hopefully end up in my shop um, because this is really nice paper this is too nice to just um, just use for like experimentation or whatever um, you can see it's really, really thick. So they look really good. I'm excited to try those because that's a new paper to me. I haven't ever tried any of these before. Okay, I have put the light on. It's casting a bit of a shadow, but I think we're going to have to just deal with that because we're on the last few things now. Okay, so these um, crema, I think is how you say that, pigment watercolors now i came across a video on youtube and i can't remember who it was um and the girl was testing this set of paints and i'd never seen anything quite like them <laughs> so she said she got them from ap fitzpatrick who i'd also never heard of but they're an art supplies company based in london um they have just a few sets of these watercolors um different theme sets on their website let's see if i can get into this and this actually did come all the way from germany because we had a bit of a delay in the shipping and i i checked up with them because they'd said that it had been dispatched and um and i think about like a week later or maybe even longer, a couple of weeks later, I hadn't heard anything else. And, um, oh yeah, they said they were processing my order. That's right. And um, I didn't hear anything else. So I contacted them and they were really friendly and really nice. And she was saying they were just having problems at the moment, probably due to COVID and Brexit, <laughs> the horrible twins. Um, <laughs> she said that um, things were a little bit delayed coming into the country and obviously this had to come from the manufacturers in Germany so this is a beautiful little metal palette and I open it up you see it's really quite special because it has a little hand swatched um, color chart here see those ones they're actually white I can see them but they're not really showing up on camera so it's very similar to the other little palettes I have but it just contains um, shades of grey grey and white and I just thought that was so beautiful you know how much I love greys um, these are really special watercolors because I think like the Daniel Smith ones they're all hand poured so you get some with little bubbles in and some with little cracks in and this is just um this doesn't affect their quality and um 
it's just how they are and it obviously depends on the pigment whether they sometimes crack or not but they're absolutely fine once they're re-wet and I just think this is a beautiful set I mean how many colors do we have here set uh, the seven in a row yeah 14 so we actually have 14 different shades so I'm really excited to just have a set that is just whites and greys so we have the cooler greys through to blacks there it does actually say on the back of the little swatch card let's just take away the box that's better you can see it better now um, it does say the colours so I'll just show you that quickly so you can see the different blacks whites and greys but this will be a very special little set that um, I can do, I think, some very interesting work with. And I'm really excited to swatch these because I think the quality is meant to be excellent. Okay, before it gets any darker, <laughs> let's show you the final two items. Um, this was recommended to me by several people. This is from Colt Pens. This is where I found this one. I think you can get them on Amazon. Um, there are probably several places that do them, but I got this one from Colt Pens. I think because they were slightly cheaper than Amazon for us here in the UK. Um, I don't know what the prices are like in the States, but I think they're probably a bit cheaper. Um, this is a Mitsubishi KH20 hand crank pencil sharpener. Um, we will be testing this out in a future video, but this is a nice looking object. You know my quest for a good pencil sharpener, and I do need one for the desk that will catch all of the shavings, which this one will. It will also sharpen um, to a fine point or a blunter point, and so I look forward to testing that out. But yeah, whoever recommended this to me, I finally bought one. And last but by no means least, I have this beautiful folder. I can't really, let me see if I can just zoom out a little bit so you can see it properly. Oh, I've just knocked the pencil sharpener. It's, um, oh, there we go. It's A3 size and it is a thing of beauty. <laughs> I used to get these in Paris. Um, they seem to be everywhere in France. And you can get them quite easily but in this country it's a little bit harder um, I've seen the green ones a lot but I actually wanted um, black and white because I think this just looks nicer in my studio um, they're by Claire Fontaine or Fontaine um, you can see the logo there sorry it's upside down um, and they're just basically a very strong card folder with um, ribbon ties on each side Let's just open this up. I've just done it up at the top. I haven't got anything in this one. Um, this one is going to be for finished drawings and paintings just to keep them safe until they sell or anything I just want to keep really. Um, so this is how it looks inside. So you just lay your work in there and you can tie up the sides so that they don't fall out. And um, yeah, I bought three of them because on Amazon, um, I don't know whether I mentioned that they came from Amazon, but um, yeah, I found them on Amazon. Um, they looked like they were selling them separately, but they said there was a minimum order quantity of three. So I bought three and I'm using one of them for my paint swatches that are on loose sheets of paper. Uh, the other one's being used to hold pre-cut watercolour paper, just to keep that all in one place and nice and tidy. And this one will be for finished paintings and drawings. So that is my absolutely massive art haul. I have talked for I don't even know how long. <laughs> it is actually getting dark outside. <laughs> so I'm going to say goodbye to you now. Um, for sure the swatching is going to be in a separate video because this is going to just be way too long. But I hope you enjoyed seeing the different things that I purchased and... Yeah, I look forward to swatching them with you. This will be very exciting. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you soon.